Sometimes in multi-sim we want to be able to create signals with different shapes, like square waves, triangle waves, sine waves, and sometimes we want to be able to measure those signals and see how they change over time. So I'm going to show you how to make a simple circuit that creates signals of different shapes, and then I'm going to show you how to probe them and graph what those signals look like over time. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find a signal source. So we can come over here to the Sources panel and click on that. And there are several different sources. We are interested in voltage sources. And some of the ones that might be helpful are the AC voltage source, which is another word for a sine wave. There is a clock voltage source, which is another word for a square wave. And then there's a triangular voltage source as well. So these are the three voltage sources that we are most interested in right now. We're going to start with a triangular voltage source. So I'll click on that and then put it down on the canvas there. Now, by itself, we can't use the voltage source um, to generate a signal. The, the voltage source actually has to be hooked up to at least some component before it will uh, create a signal that we can measure. So we're going to uh, put a resistor on there as well so that we can have some measurable signal. So we're just going to hook the voltage source directly to the resistor and then we're going to hook the resistor back to the voltage source. Okay. Now it's also helpful to have a ground on there. So we're going to go to schematic connectors and then choose the ground icon and place it there. And then we're going to connect the ground to our circuit like that. So this is a very simple circuit. And we can run a simulation but right now, we can't really see what's happening in this circuit. We can't see what the voltage is doing or how it's changing over time. So I'm going to stop this circuit, and I'm going to place a probe that will allow us to see what's going on. So I'm going to come over here to Analysis and Annotation and click here. And I'm going to place a voltage probe And I'm just going to connect it right there to the top side of this resistor. Okay, So now I can run this circuit. And I can click on the grapher tab on the top. And that brings me over to a, a picture that shows what the signal looks like over time. So on the left hand side, this shows the signal voltage. And on the bottom, this shows the, uh, the time. Okay? So the signal is going from 0 volts up to 5 volts and back. And in the bottom, this says 1 millisecond per division. That means that each one of these lines represents 1 millisecond. So it looks like there's one complete period of the wave for every millisecond. That means that there would be a thousand periods in one second. A thousand cycles per second is one kilohertz. So this signal is operating at a thousand cycles per second right now, or one kilohertz. Okay. Right now, over on the right hand side, we can see that the signal is kind of flickering a little bit. And that's because the signal is not being triggered properly right now. The trigger tells the computer when to take a picture of the signal. And ideally, we'd like to take a picture at the same time every time. So we can come up here um, and apply a trigger. So on the trigger menu, we can click down, and we can choose a normal trigger. So 
that looks a little bit better. There are also some other settings that we can choose. So if we come up here and click on the little gear icon, that will open the configuration pane for us. Okay. So at the top, there's the trigger types, and you can see that right now the normal trigger is selected. That's what we want. There are also some other adjustments that we can make, particularly the time per division and then the voltage scale. So if we adjust the time per division, we can use these up or down uh, arrows. If we adjust it one way, um, the the wave starts to look bigger. You can see now it says 200 microseconds per division. Um, if we adjust it the other way, um, the wave starts to look smaller. But what we're actually doing is we're actually zooming in or zooming out on the wave. Okay, We're not changing any properties of the wave itself. We're only changing the way that we look at it. So it's like we're using a camera to zoom in or zoom out. When we zoom in, things look bigger. When we zoom out, they look smaller. But really, the thing that we're looking at is not changing. We're only changing the way we look at it. Okay. The same goes for the voltage down here. We can change the minimum and maximum voltage. So if I make the maximum voltage 10 volts, now the wave looks much smaller on the screen, but you can see that it's still going between 0 and 5 volts. So the wave is really the same size, we've just changed the way that we are looking at it. Okay. So this allows us to see the wave and see how it changes over time. We can also stop the the simulation and now we have some different controls. Okay, we still have the minimum and maximum voltage settings there, but now for time we have a start time and an end time for our graph. Okay? So when I am displaying a graph, I like to have it start at zero and end um, just after one or two periods so that we can see those periods very quick, very clearly. So if I make this, um, say, three milliseconds, now we can see three complete periods of the wave on the screen. And you can see it starts at time zero now and goes up to three milliseconds, so it's, it's easy to see what's happening with the timing there. I might also like to have this wave kind of centered on the screen, so I might choose to go from um, a minimum of minus one volt up to six volts, and now this wave is nicely centered on the screen. Once you have a signal that looks nice, you might want to save that picture of that signal so that you can use it later on or come back to it and refer to it later. There's an easy way to do that. You can come up here and click on the export button in the top right hand corner of the screen. And we can choose to export the grapher image. And when we do that, you can see that we've downloaded a picture here. And I can click on the picture so we can see what it looks like. You can see it's a nice clear picture of what we have on the graph. And then I can come back and use that picture later on if I want to write a report or just refer back to it and remember what I was looking at.